back to my shop. Today I have a piece of Osage Orange, Osage Orange, however you want to say it. Uh, a beautiful piece of wood. Uh, I cut this myself from some wood that was given to me a couple of years ago when a guy was moving house and uh, he had a whole pile of it in his backyard and I didn't really know what it was until I cut into it and I could see that beautiful orange color that's in the wood. So I have a piece here and I'm going to make a live edge uh, shallow vase. It's uh, it's going to be approximately six inches tall, maybe five inches around. We'll see. Um, so we're going to get this mounted on a wormwood screw in the bark side. There is no bark on it, but it's going to be in the bark side. And then uh, we're going to get the underside roughed down to um, fit into the jaws of my chuck. And then we'll be able to hollow it out. One more thing I do want to do with this is want to go a little bit arty farty, which I generally do not do. Um, I'm going to actually attempt to stain the inside of this blue, and I'm going to be using some bar top pour on um, resin, which is uh, like a glass almost finish. So we'll see how that goes too. Okay, so the piece of wood is mounted on the lathe. It's on the wormwood screw, which is in there. I drilled a 3 8 hole in the middle of the bark side of the wood and uh, screwed the piece of wood onto that. And I've got my largest jaws in my chuck just to give it support. Um, as you can see, there's gaps on both sides where the bark or the wood peels away because of the curvature. And uh, I've got my tail stuck up, which will stay there for support. Um, so what I'm going to do now is turn the outside of the vase and I'll leave a uh, tenon on the underside for my smaller jaws which is about an inch and three quarters. So my tenon is going to be inch and three quarters rising up to an edge uh, which should be live and then uh, we'll get it turned around into the smaller jaws. Right so I have a freshly sharpened bowl gouge. And I've got the lathe in slow speed to start with because this is not exactly an even turn. It's going to be a bit bumpy to start with. I'm hearing a quiet knocking on my door Lost chances, sideways glances I will let them be without me Creation, celebration I will let them pass me by and Okay, so it's recommended to clean the wood with um, methylated spirits or some kind of a spirit to get all of the dust out of the grain before applying any sort of a finish. So uh, with a rubber glove on and a piece of paper I can apply this. It's an alcohol based cleaner basically to get anything out of the grain. Any dirt you can see it coming off on the paper. This way this will not be underneath your wax finishes. It will be removed to get an optimal finish. And for a sanding sealer, I simply use a shellac, which I've watered down with uh, mineral spirits. That basically uh, allows it to go on and come off without getting too um, uneven, I guess. It gives you a much more even coat, and it does the job just fine. All 
right, so that's sat for a few minutes. It's nice and dry. It's an even coat. There's no uh, streaking or anything. Uh, you could take that back with a little bit of wire wool or a, a light coat of sandpaper if you really needed to. I really don't think that it's necessary on this particular piece. So I've got my Yorkshire grit now. I'm going to start applying that to the piece. Get it all over, get it nice and coated while the lathe is stationary. And then uh, once we get it fully coated, I will uh, turn the lathe on slow speed and then gradually increase my speed and get it down to the uh, shine that you expect from Yorkshire grit. Okay, that's coated now. I'll get it on slow speed and get it started. Bring my speed up now. About a thousand RPM. I can feel it getting smoother and I can see the shine in the wood. And that is lovely and smooth. Lovely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is apply some Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. And I will probably put uh, three coats on this. Uh, I'll put the first coat on and let it sit for a few minutes and then uh, gradually build up a couple of layers, two or three layers. Now the inside is getting a different treatment altogether. The inside, which I've not done before, is going to have a blue stain and I'm really not sure how this is going to go I just hope it doesn't leach through to the outside it might well do but I'm going to put it on very carefully uh, blue stain and then bar top finish which is going to be like a glass hopefully like a glass finish and it will be waterproof essentially you can put water in this vase when it's done okay so I've got some Hampshire Sheen high glass just Put on there by hand. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and then I'll come back and buff that off. And I'll do that three times and then uh, and then I'll get it turned around and we'll hollow it out. Okay, so it's been sat for a few minutes. It's a bit tacky. Uh, I'm going to buff this to uh, a shine and I'm going to continue to apply a few more coats until I'm satisfied with it. It is coming up just lovely. Um, I'm just going to put a few more coats on it and I'll come back. And that gives a lovely shine to the wood. So what I'm going to do now is turn this piece around and we're going to hollow this thing out. Okay, so I've got this now turned around in the truck. I've got it on slow speed again. I've got my tail stuck up for support as I start just to make sure it's safe. Um, very satisfied with the finish on the outside of the bowl with the combination 
initially of cleaning it with methylated spirits and then putting the uh, sanding sealer on which I used shellac um, which you could cut back or I actually watered mine down with methylated spirits it, it basically becomes more liquid and it goes on a lot smoother and a lot finer does the same job then I uh, cut it back with Yorkshire grit and then three coats of Hampshire sheen very satisfied with that finish so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow the inside out Once I was a star out shining Now I'm buzzing like a neon sign That's missing half its letters And it's getting dimmer on time Cherry wine, yeah I will let them pass me by again Oh Waking, sleeping, drinking, eating Working till I've thrown the day Just another fading day So it's at this point that I decided to stop and have a little bit of a clean up and a think because what I want to do with this piece is in fact use some colour which I don't usually do and I'm also going to use a polyurethane bar top gloss finish on the interior so it's actually going to be waterproof on the inside. Okay so first of all I'm going to clean the inside of this with uh, methylated spirits again just to get all of the fine particles of dust out of there. That's gonna show any tear out as well, actually, which I'm hoping there isn't any. I did a pretty good sanding job, I think. And I'm debating on burning the edge as well with a torch. I think I'm gonna do that once it's dried. Okay, so the methyl hydrate, the methylated spirits has now uh, dried up. And I've got my torch here and I'm gonna just burn the edge. 
That's my plan anyway. <laughs> Okay, I think I am ready for dyeing the interior blue. That's the color my son chose. So that's the color I'm going with. I have no idea how this is going to pan out because I'm not much of a color guy. So let's see how this goes. Broken wing, it didn't last a spring. You shoved me out before the nest was called. Okay, so this is new to me, uh, adding this much color to anything really. Um, it's kind of a turquoise blue color, I guess, on the inside, and the ossage are orange. I still have to take the foot off. Now, there's the damage from when the piece flew off the lathe and the reason it flew off the lathe is because I really made my tenon too small I should have made it bigger um, but there it is I managed to get the bowl or the vase completed even with such a small and damaged tenon um, now I just have to uh, complete the inside so I've got this two-part resin it's not an epoxy this is an actual resin um, it's not particularly odorous and my understanding is it takes 24 hours to cure and you have a good hour in which to manipulate it to get it to cover all the surfaces. So my intention is to get it on all of the inside, maybe the lip as well. Yeah, I think I want it on the lip and then uh, a little bit in the bottom to just be flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some in both of these two cups, equal amounts, mix it together really well and then pour it in and let's see how this goes I couldn't fly but God I tried I hit the ground and I was on my own alone in a big blue land with only my legs to stand and no one to lend a hand or to pick me up And that is the inside finished with two part resin and hardener which gives you a waterproof finish that's uh, a bar top finish basically it's uh, glass like it's absolutely beautiful um, never thought I would go this route but it's quite nice and there it is my five inch tall by six inch diameter Osage orange vase now like I said it's stained blue on the inside with a two part resin so it's waterproof and the rim is burnt it's a live edge um, it was quite an interesting turn and getting thrown off the lathe like that uh, it's pretty hard wood Osage so uh, I'll just keep in mind next time to make my tenon that much bigger so it doesn't get thrown off the lathe it happens ask Mike Walt he'll tell you anyway thanks for watching I'll leave some photos at the end and this is now going to sit for 24 hours um, so that it can cure properly but I'll take a couple of quick photographs now and I'll get this video uploaded as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you're a new subscriber to my channel thank you for watching I really appreciate it. If you have any comments questions please leave something down below and uh, I'll get back to you and if you're a fellow wood turner 
um, PM me with uh, an address and I'll send you a sticker. Um, my sticker is this here. I'll show you a picture of my sticker. And I'll talk to you again soon. I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye now.